Hey, good Thursday morning, everybody. This is Firstborn Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brian Petters. Quick vlog update on our severe weather threat that's going to be heading our way for Sunday. Now, this is still several days away. We're talking four days out. Today is Thursday. This isn't going to happen today. This won't be Friday. This won't be Saturday. It's going to be Sunday. That's the time frame that we're focused on. First thing I'm going to start with is our severe weather outlook for tomorrow. So this is going to be for Friday. You can see the severe weather threat is going to be peaking here across the middle Mississippi River Valley, Arkansas in particular. This is the area we'll watch for the potential for severe weather on Friday. That's the day that we'll start to see this system kind of come together. We'll go to Saturday and you'll see that this begins to shift to the east. You see that threat shifts into the Ohio Valley. That's the low threat, medium threat from maybe north uh, north of Asheville up or uh, Nashville, excuse me, up towards Kentucky and then down into the Gulf Coast. This is the day three. So this is Saturday. So to our west, you can see we'll be fine here on Saturday, but we're going to see the storms developing to our west. Let's go to day four. And again, day four, they kind of put this outlook out where we have a 15% chance of severe weather. And you can kind of see most of the Piedmont into the coastal sections under the 15% chance of severe weather. So essentially, this thing is going to be a big front that's going to be moving across the country. And by Sunday, we're going to see the impacts here in the Carolinas. So let's see how this unfolds. This is a look at the NAM model. You can see our big storm system in the middle of the country. This is a very powerful cold front and low pressure system um, for this time of the year, but really spring is when we tend to get these monster systems set up. So this is going into to, um, tomorrow, um, late in the day. You can see the severe weather threat here across uh, areas of the Mid-South. We'll go into tomorrow night and then go into Friday uh, morning. This will be Friday morning about 8 a.m. our time. You can see the, the clear squall line that is forming just ahead of the cold front and pushing to the east. So Friday, we'll see the severe weather threat developing here, especially in the afternoon hours. You can see the resurgence here across Alabama, um, Tennessee, down into the Gulf Coast. You can kind of clearly see why we have that um, that severe weather outlook for Saturday to our west. Let's go into Saturday night. We'll go to 2 o'clock in the morning. So this is 2 a.m. Um, Sunday morning, and we'll go into Sunday morning at 8 a.m. You could see um, we've got the front kind of falling apart a little bit, but what's interesting, if you look at some of the other parameters here, like one of the things we look at is CAPE values, um, there's still some pretty good CAPE for this time of the morning. This is 8 o'clock in the morning, and a boatload of wind shear. To me, that's the thing that jumps off of these charts, and for the last couple days while we've been talking about this so much, there's just so much wind energy associated with this. You could see this wind energy is up here. Um, you know, this is a shear in meters per uh, squared, um, per second squared. So basically think of this as how much wind change with direction are we getting. And when you get up around, you know, three, four, five hundred, those are off the charts. Anything above 150 would be something I would be, be concerned about. And then you look at some of the low level winds. This is at 700 millibars, 800 millibars. And then you look down to 500 miles. It's just a lot of wind energy with this system. So let's go as far out as the NAM goes, which goes to about um, 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. You can see the, the cold front crossing the mountains and moving into our area. And just ahead of it is going to be key because if this timing is after 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, then we'll have the, a lot of cape in place. And this is that thunderstorm fuel you showed, I show quite a bit. Look at that big pl plume of green. And if you look over on the, on the left here, you could see that's all above a thousand. And anything above a thousand is pretty significant, especially considering the amount of wind shear, uh, that we're going to see with this system. I'll show you that shear again off the charts. Um, and these low level winds are just insane. I mean, these low level winds, are getting up there around 50, 60 knots, uh, which is, you know, closer to 60, 70 miles an hour in some locations at 5,000 feet above our head. So as this line comes in, I would expect that it's going to mix down some of those stronger winds to the surface. So right now, as of today, and this doesn't change much from last night when I showed this, um, but you see our biggest threat that I'm concerned about is damaging winds. Right now, I think it's a very, um, I would say up there at the high end of the medium threat, I would almost want to put this in the high range, but damaging winds would be our main concern. Now, hail is kind of low because I, I don't expect these to be really deep convection. These are going to be pretty shallow by the time they get here. But the hail and tornado threat is one thing that could go up depending on how this unfolds. If we see cells develop a main, uh, ahead of the main line, ahead of this squall line, then we might have more of a hail or tornado threat. So those are two things that are on the low end right now. 
um, just because of uncertainty, more so than the, than the fact that they could or couldn't happen. It's just that they're very uncertain because of how things are setting up. But wind is the one thing that I have the most confidence in because of how much wind energy we're going to see with this system. So I'll be tracking it over the next couple of days. There's really no weather worries between now and Sunday. So enjoy the beautiful weather. It's going to be gorgeous today, gorgeous tomorrow, um, and really gorgeous Saturday for the most part. It's Sunday afternoon, and that's the time frame. Think of uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon to about 8 o'clock in the evening. Now, I can't be real specific on the timing because, you know, this thing slows down 5 miles per hour times 4 days. That's going to make a big change in the actual timing of this. So I'm getting generals. We get closer, we narrow down. That's how forecasting works. You can't get specific 7 days out. You get kind of wide in general and then we kind of narrow it down. We call it a forecast funnel. And that's what we do. We try to get it, um, start wide and then kind of narrow in as we get closer. I'll probably do a Facebook Live at some point later today um, or tonight with another update as we get some new data. But until then, just enjoy the weather the next couple days and just keep this kind of locked in the back of your mind, back burner Sunday that I need to be weather aware.